Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and today I want to go over ventilation. Um, I've had a lot of questions about this, and I haven't done a video on ventilation in a very long time, so I think it's time that we uh, updated that information. When we're talking about ventilation, I want to start off in the laboratory. And one of the big reasons is, is that this right here is our HEPA filter. It produces 99.999% clean air, something like that. And this is where we do all of our work, our clean room work. What this does is it pulls air from outside the wall in through this box where there's a pre-filter. So there's a pre-filter on the wall, a pre-filter in this box, and then this HEPA filter. What that does is it pulls air into this room, thereby creating positive pressure. Now I can go outside this room and I have a switch that I flip that turns on the fan before I even walk into the room. What that does is it creates positive pressure, so when I open the door, mold spores, anything else in the air get blown away from this room before the door's ever even opened. This is the point. Air comes in from the door that's over there next to our Prometheus bagger um, and is pulled in this direction towards the lab, which we're able then to cycle this air through the lab, creating the positive pressure. Um, <clears throat> the air then bleeds out through this doorway, and as it travels down the hall towards our negative pressure grow room, um, it is able to exit over there. So we allow fresh, the freshest air to come to the lab, be filtered twice before it hits our HEPA filter, thereby filtering it three times, creating positive pressure and clean air in this room, and then travels out the door and down into the incubation space, which we'll go to now. So when you're talking about your incubation room, the ideal is actually to have it negative pressured, much like we have our grow room. This room is positive pressured, and I'll go through it in just a moment and explain why, but the difference between positive pressure and negative pressure goes like this. A negative pressure room is whenever you draw air out of a room so that fresh air just flows in to fill the void. Whenever you have positive pressure, you are pushing air into a room, and that is pushing stale air out. And there's two different ways to think about this, and I try to always just think in terms of flow and in anything I do. So we have our laboratory next door to the incubation space, and that is positive pressure. That is to keep mold spores out and always have clean air flowing into that clean space. In this room, the incubation space, you, what you really want is to be pulling CO2 out and not having that CO2 bleed back into your home or your workspace or near your workers or anything else. So it's actually ideal, more ideal to take the air out than it is to push air into your incubation space just so you don't have a heavy amount of CO2. Now, the reason why we have positive pressure here is we actually have a, a household vent up there in the corner. You probably can't see it because of the bags, but that vent is pushing air constantly into this room. Um, what that does is it makes this a positive pressure room and then the air flows out. Now, the reason why this is acceptable here is because the air gets to flow out and because our grow room down the hallway is negative pressured, it's actually being pushed out of this room and right down the hallway to the grow room. Um, I had a fellow come over here with a CO2 meter, for those of you who've been asking about that. I don't have one, they're expensive, I don't need one, I just read the mushrooms and if they get stimmy I know I'm getting too much, for, uh, too much CO2. In this room we have about 1,350 parts per million CO2. Um, anything over 2,000 in the 2 to 4,000 range is dangerous, so we're well within the safety lines. It's not ideal for oyster mushroom growing. For oyster mushroom growing, you actually are chasing, a lot of people chase six to 800 parts per million. Um, but that is usually for people who have their ventilation on a timer. Uh, our ventilation is constant, and we can go look at that now, and I'll show you that to you. Thing to mention real quick that I almost forgot. We have a fan over in the corner near that vent, and what that van does is just push air back further into the room. It stirs all the air up and makes sure that there's no stale spots. It also allows cooler air to be pushed over here towards these, this back wall of bags so that they don't overheat. So when it comes to your grow room, anytime you have your grow room set up in a place where it is potentially possible for the spores to get back into a living space, a working space where people are going to be working without respirators, a clean room laboratory, or anything of the like, you really want that negative pressured as in you want your grow room to be negative pressured. This means that behind me is this door and air is flowing from this door 
into this wall of moisture that we've got from the humidifier and it is then being pulled all the way to the back of the room by the fan we have back there. Now, in a negative pressure setup, I do not recommend putting a filter on there to extend the life of your fans or anything else. Your fans are going to get eaten up. And that's why, for maintenance, we primarily have, we always buy a backup fan. And this fan was actually pulled out of the grow room and cleaned yesterday, so it's still wet. Um, I mean the day before yesterday. And what this does is it allows us to pull the old fan out, put the new fan in, take the old fan outside, and Jason will pressure wash it down, put it on the shelf, and it'll dry for a week. And then every week we do this and just change out our fans. It extends the life of our fans. Now, eventually one of your fans will succumb to wear and tear, and that is why I always try to keep two or three in backup if possible. Um, at least one per grow room. So when the other grow room goes back online, we've got a fan that'll go in it, and then a fan that goes on the shelf that will always be there for it. The other fan in this room always has a backup. And then if anything ever goes wrong, we throw that fan away, replace it, and then order a new one in off Amazon. Now, let's talk about fans for a second. When it comes to your fans, you gotta take cubic feet into account. So my grow room is 11 by 19, by eight feet tall that comes out to roughly 1672 cubic feet i like to get my air exchange um, down to as, as, as to where it's basically being replaced every minute if i can um, as long as my humidifier can keep up with it it's better to go overpowered and cut your fan back than it is to go underpowered now this fan that i have like i was showing you is only 800 cubic feet it is replacing my the air in my grow room roughly twice every five minutes. It's, it's like once every two minutes, two and a half minutes. Um, that's perfectly acceptable. I go by the stemminess on my mushrooms. And if they've got real long stems, like they're stretching out, it means that they're thinking that they're on the forest floor and they're trying to stretch out above that high CO2 spot to an area where there's higher oxygen. And in my understanding, that is in, in an evolutionary way of saying, you know, hey, I can sense that I'm really close to the ground. I really want to get myself up into a high oxygen environment so I can really spread my spores. And that's when they'll cap out. And caps are what you really want when you're selling mushrooms anyways, not those hard stems. So the best way to go for most mushrooms, especially oysters, is to have as much oxygen as possible in your grow room. Now, we leave our fan on 24 seven. We have 26 set of shelves. We call it the ABC shelves because that is how many you know letters are in the alphabet so it's shelf a b c d all the way to z each one of these shelving units holds six layers six shelves and each shelf will hold three bags that comes out to 468 bags i think I, i'm sure if i'm wrong you guys will tell me um what this allows us to do is, is host roughly 500 bags it's, it's actually we don't count these shelves on the side as abc bag or abc shelves and so they end up being some extra uh, shelf space. And then we have the other grow room. <clears throat> Having 500 bags in here allows us to produce, on average, about three pounds per bag first flush. If we go to where we're only keeping bags in here for about two weeks, you can imagine how many mushrooms you end up putting out. Now, that eats up a ton of oxygen. Um, interestingly enough, though, when our, our friend came through with the CO2 meter, the CO2 did not change from the point of the incubation room all the way to the exit in the grow room where the, the air is pulled out. Um, but you took two steps away from the incubation towards the lab and it went all the way down to about 600 parts per million. So you can kind of see we're moving that much air through that it doesn't really have time to spike much in the grow room. It spikes mainly in the incubation that gets traveled through here. In an ideal world, I'd be venting my um, incubation air out into the world and having even more available free oxygen in here. That's such as life. So we're never dealing with ideals, especially when we're starting as little guys working our way up. Now, going back to the back here, and we'll take you and actually show you the fan. Now, here's where our fan's at. And here in a moment, maybe we'll get some B-roll that you can, we can overlay on here where we can show the ventilation, like the, um, the ducting and where it goes. But this is the very back corner of the grow room. Normally I'd be wearing a mask in here, but because I'm trying to talk to you guys, especially over the noise of the fan, I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. But always wear your mask in the grow room. Now, when it comes to this, 
we're pulling air out and pushing it up the ducting. That means the air is flowing this direction. Because this is the only exit on this side of the house, it means that that air's got to come from somewhere. It's coming all the way from um, over where our Prometheus bagger is around the door, the cracks of the windows, etc., flowing towards the lab, then to incubation and the grow room. It's getting pulled through the humidity in the air that we're putting through with our House of Hydro humidifier, code Mossy, and uh, uh, getting pulled back through here. That allows the, the available air to travel through the grow room, pick up humidity, it kind of sinks down a little bit, and then we put it at the top so that the air gets mixed as it goes through the grow room. So it gets pulled in, any humid air gets heavier, falls down, gets pulled up, and that allows us to have just a good even mix. And as you can see from these little black pearl beauties, uh, we're getting quite a bit of cap. I think it's pretty good airflow. So, so this is a good example. <clears throat> the other day, Jason changed out the fan, and we hadn't been as heavily stocking this grow room, so we I told him to start cutting it back to about half power, and then as it builds up with spores, to crank it up beyond that until it's time to change it out. <clears throat> we stopped that because we've started heavily stocking this room. Jason changed it out. I came down the next morning, that was yesterday, and you can see the stems on this and how long they've gotten. Now that is from too much CO2. So I, I went, I just immediately cranked up the fan and let Jason know that from now on when we're stocking this heavily, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going um, just full crank as soon as we put the, the fan in the grow room. That way we prevent this, but you can see that they've already capped out a little bit more just since yesterday. Um, and they, they right before yeah, <clears throat> sorry, yesterday they were very long, long, tall stems, smaller caps, and now they are they're capping out more, and the stems are going to start thickening up. Now that mushroom is not my ideal, um, and the caps are never going to get quite as big again on this particular cluster. But when it flushes a second time, the caps will get bigger as long as the fresh air is there. So you can save it. Um, to where it's acceptable again, but it's not. You're not going to be able to get it to revert back to ideal. So it's better to catch the stuff early, rather than, uh, you know, getting a surprise. This black pearl, even though it is still a new mushroom to me, um, is a really good example of how big your caps are getting and how meaty they're getting whenever you have good airflow. So since we've had good airflow going through this room, we're getting nice big fat caps. They're nice and meaty. They got a lot of texture to them, a lot of resistance, and this cluster is just really flushed out, capped out, and is growing really nice. So really guys, when it comes down to ventilation, it's really simple. Um, I've probably over explained things and probably talked about things two or three times already, so hopefully uh, Robin will have my back and uh, edit that pretty well for me. But the simplicity is just keep your air moving. Um, you can tell from your mushrooms. It, your mushrooms will get stemmy long before the levels become dangerous to you. It is a more ideal to have a CO2 meter if you can afford one. But for many of us who are starting out, we're usually on a very limited budget. Read the mushrooms. You know, if you're getting large stems and itty bitty caps, that's too much CO2 and not enough oxygen. So keep that air moving, keep it humidified, keep it treated, and remember guys, you always want negative pressure when you're trying to pull stuff away from you, just like spores or humidity, mold, anything like that. And you want to do use positive pressure like in your lab when you're filtering that air before it goes in somewhere, especially for like a clean room, uh, like our laboratory. So with that guys, you know, please uh, hit that like button. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Over like 40% of you guys aren't subscribed. I see you. And uh, as always y'all, keep spawning culture. Thank you for watching, and please make sure to check out our other videos.